before I go into my reasons for the sentences that I'm about to impose, I want to address two things. First, the defendant's suggestion that the Concord police somehow engaged in an effort to wrongfully convict him. I think the words that he used were something along the lines of to throw sand in the eyes of the people in an effort to do so. Let me be clear. There is absolutely no basis to that claim. Having sat through the trial in this case and the pre-trial pre proceedings, there is no doubt in my mind the Concord police worked tirelessly and skillfully to bring the killer of Stephen and Wendy Reed to justice. They developed leads, they carefully considered evidence, and they put together all the evidence in this case demonstrating beyond a reasonable doubt this wasn't just the Conquer police a jury of 12 people found that the defendant committed these murders the suggestion that somehow his conviction in this case is the product of misconduct by the police is insulting it's outrageous and it's untrue Nothing else reveals the sort of person who stands before me to make such a claim when the evidence suggests completely to the contrary. Let me address the family of when you read. In my view, the most important people who are here today. Those were very powerful statements delivered in court and also provided to me in writing. I read each of them and I listen carefully to all of you. I appreciate those words because they gave me a sense of, of who your parents were, who your brother was, who your family friend was, and I feel like I, I, I don't know them, but I have a sense of who they are, and I have a sense of what their absence means to each of you, not having them with you. I thought a lot about them in the months leading up to this trial and before today. And to have a clearer picture of, of not just the pictures that we saw of them in those woods, but the lives they lived and the difference they made to each of you is very powerful. Whenever I consider punishment, I'm sentencing rather, I consider the purposes of, punish, of sentencing. Punishment, general and specific deterrence and rehabilitation. I've thought a lot about each of those here leading up to today and this morning. The arguments of counsel, statements by the victim's family, the defendant's prior background, and I want to be clear that as far as that's concerned, I'm not going to consider anything that did not result in a prior conviction of, of Mr. Clegg. There was some reference to a prior uh, stabbing it's my understanding that that did not result in a conviction. That's not going to be part of, of the sentences that I'm imposing today. But most importantly, I think about the circumstances surrounding the crimes themselves. The defendant has been convicted by a jury of the murders of Stephen and Wendy Reed, falsifying physical evidence and being a felon in possession of a handgun. As I said earlier, I listened carefully in the course of the trial the testimony of witnesses, and I considered the evidence that was presented in the course of the trial. I spent a lot of time thinking about this case before, during, and after trial. What makes this case so hard to comprehend, and some of the victim statements referenced that earlier today, is the question that may never be answered. Why? I don't have an answer for any of you today, and as I said, we may never have an answer to that question. But as I think about the appropriate sentences in this case for Mr. Clegg, there are some things that are clear. On the afternoon of April 18th, 2022, Stephen and Wendy Reed left their home and went for a walk. They went on a trail in the woods, a place many people from Concord go to, to mountain bike, walk, their dogs, to hike in a place of peace. 
Shortly after they entered the woods, they encountered the defendant, by all accounts a total stranger to them before that day. For some incomprehensible reason, he pulled out his 9mm semi-hand automatic handgun and shot them multiple times, killing them. There is no question he had a 9mm handgun. The evidence came in about his purchase of that gun, and he was found with that gun when he was arrested in Vermont. As I think about this case, though, I thought a lot about what Stephen and Wendy must have felt when the defendant pulled out that gun and started firing on them. No reason, no justification, the senseless, horrific murder of two innocent people. But what must those moments have been like? for them, talking to each other, observed by a witness entering the woods, having a normal conversation, and minutes later to have somebody pull a handgun and open fire on them. People who devoted their lives to each other, their family, and helping to make the world a better place. Violently shot by the defendant seconds after they encountered him. The defendant wasted no time hiding their bodies and trying to cover up his actions. He burned his nearby tent site, which included almost all of his worldly possessions, and fled Concord. He took steps to fly under the radar, hoping he would escape the consequences of his actions. Bought a ticket to Germany, a false Romanian passport, and amounted savings to get away. Those are not the actions of somebody trying to escape a probation violation. Those are the actions of a murderer in flight from his conduct. The question of sentencing in any case is hard. Most people who are sentenced will re-enter society at some point. The hope is that they will emerge from their punishment and their time in custody rehabilitated and less likely to offend. For some people, however, who commit acts so senseless, so violent, and so terrible, the sentence needs to be crafted in a manner to make sure that they can never be in a position to hurt another innocent person. From my perspective, this is such a case. Any rehabilitation of the defendant should occur when he is safely in the four walls of the prison. Stephen and Wendy Reed were good people. They should have been able to enjoy their retirement together, their children, their family, and their friends, go on many hikes together. They should have been able to do that. Logan Clegg is a stone-cold, violent murderer, nothing more. He shot and killed Stephen and Wendy, Wendy Reed for no reason. His statements today <coughs> ring hollow. He deserves nothing less than a sentence that fully re reflects the magnitude of his crimes. And for that reason, I'm going to fully impose the sentences as recommended by the state. On charge ID 2027584, a finding of guilty is entered. The defendant is sentenced to New Hampshire State Prison for not more than life, nor less than 50 years. There is added to the minimum sentence of disciplinary period equal to 150 days for each year, the minimum term of the defendant's sentence to be prorated for any part of the year. He has pretrial confinement credit of 422 days. His sentence is stand committed commencing today. He shall pay restitution of $17,564.39, $3,878.08 to Lindsay Reed, $13,686.31 to the Victim's Compensation Fund. I know, given the sentences that I've imposed in his circumstances, that he has no ability to pay counsel fees and expenses. <coughs> that order throughout for the rest of his life. He's to participate meaningfully in and complete any counseling treatment and educational programs as directed by the correctional authority or probation parole officer. The Department of Correction shall have the authority to award him earned time reductions against the minimum and maximum sentences for successful completion of programming while incarcerated. Law enforcement agencies may destroy the evidence and return it to its rightful owner. Defendant is ordered to be good behavior and comply with all terms of the sentence. On charge ID 2027585, 
finding he's guilty is, is entered on that charge of second degree murder. Defendant is sentenced to New Hampshire State Prison for not more than life nor less than 50 years. There is added to the minimum sentence of disciplinary period equal to 150 days for each year of the minimum term of the defendant's sentence to be prorated for any part of the year. The sentence is to be served as follows. Stand committed. The sentence is consecutive to the sentence that I just read. Again, no responsibility for council fees. As directed by the correctional authority or probation parole officer, subject to the provisions of RCA 651A, Department of Corrections shall have the authority to award and earn time reductions against minimum and maximum sentences for successful completion of programs while incarcerated. I truly hope he engages in re rehabilitation, but there's no chance if this sentence holds that he will spend a day outside of the prison. Law enforcement agencies may destroy their rightful evidence, destroy the evidence, or return it to its rightful owner. He's ordered to be a free behavior and comply with all terms of the sentence. The remaining charges of, in charge of D 209145 for falsifying physical evidence, 2053093 for falsifying physical evidence, 2053094 for falsifying physical evidence, 2053095C for falsifying physical evidence. <coughs> 53096 for being a convicted felon in possession of, of a dangerous weapon. These sentences are identical and concurrent to the second consecutive life sentence, uh, 50 year to life sentence that I've just imposed. Each of these sentences is as follows The defendant is sentenced to New Hampshire State Prison for not more than seven years, no less than three and a half years. There is added to the minimum sentence disciplinary period equal to 150 days for each year of the minimum term. The defendant sentence to be prorated for a part of the year. The sentence to be served as follows: stand committed, consecutive. Again, these are all concurrent with each other and consecutive. The first sentence and concurrent with the second 50 to life sentence. Again, for each of these, no responsibility for counsel fees. Again, these are participating in counseling treatment and educational programs as directed by the correctional authority. Officer. Department of Corrections shall have the authority to award him earned time reductions against the minimum and maximum sentences and successful completion of programming while incarcerated. Law enforcement agencies may destroy the evidence or return it to its rightful owner. He's ordered to be of good behavior and comply with all terms of the sentence. Again, these are all identical and concurrent to each other. It is my hope in imposing these sentences that the defendant never again walks the streets as a free man and that no one else has to suffer the same fate as he I hope that the family has peace. I wish you all the best. And that concludes the sentencing hearing. Thank you. Rise to the court. Your Honor, yes. may I make one request? Yes. Uh, with regard to restitution, um, that it be held in abeyance pending <coughs> appeal, however, uh, to the Victim Compensation Fund. I believe that there's 3,895 that's in. So, Your Honor, the state had requested that the total amount of restitution be determined within 30 days. We submitted an updated form yesterday, I believe. So the form you may have read off with regard to the total amount of restitution was incorrect. Okay. However, the form that would have been submitted yesterday would have indicated that the total be determined within 30 days. There was $13,686.31 to victims' comp which was reflected in that original sentence, but the amount to Lindsay Reed was inaccurate. Um, so the state is asking some additional time to be able to come up with that total amount. So in terms of this request that be held in abeyance until after the, uh, the appeal is decided, I think practically no money's gonna change hands in the next 30 days. We all, we all recognize that. Any objection to that? No, Judge. Thank you, Judge. Or is it recess?